Alrighty then. This is my post airbrushing video update. Thought I'd show you the finished parts now that they're dry. Take a look at one of these lunar module adapter panels. Turned out good. Pleased with the overall appearance. One thing I am curious about, and maybe you guys can help me, is that the surface has a bit of a texture to it, a little coarse, as opposed to, say, the backside, which is smooth. And right off the top of my head, I'm thinking it might be the uh, mixture of air versus product that I'm putting through the gun. Maybe too much air, uh, maybe too much volume, I'm not sure, of air. So maybe you could uh, message me with that and let me know why that would be. Um, would like to have actually put more product on the part. And I think I did a lot more spraying um, over and over again to, to get this coverage when I probably could have put more paint on so that's what I'm thinking but I'm not sure since I've never done this before so maybe you guys can give me some guidance in that respect but I'm not unpleased with how things turned out it looks great I'm really happy with the color I like the color uh, mix again I combined two colors the model master green zinc chromate which is this color right here this is what it looks like in its bottle and then the testers yellow zinc chromate, which is what that looks like. And I mixed a little bit of the green in with a bottle of the uh, yellow. And then I thinned it with um, Mr. Color leveling thinner. And it seemed to spray well, but maybe not enough paint, too much air. I'm not sure, but maybe you guys can give me some tips on that. Um, but I do like the color. It's very uh, reminiscent of what you'll see on an aircraft fuselage, um, space shuttle fuselage, um, maybe some rocket body fuselages, I'm not really sure. Um, don't know if the, the Apollo spacecraft utilized this color or not. I suspect it did in areas. I remember seeing it on the aft end of the S-4B stage, so I'm guessing it was probably used. But anyhow, I decided to use it um, on, on these sections. Again, this model is a block one, not technically accurate, so I'm okay with the paint being not altogether that accurate, as long as it looks good. You know, if you're going to build something that's not technically accurate, and it's going to be a display, a display piece, um, just have it look nice. You know, do a good job on the paint and a good job on the build, and it'll look really nice. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. So I'm happy with that overall. This panel section looks good. This is the hinged compartment that opens and closes right here that will hinge right in here and open and close like such just like that that turned out nice um, this here is the LEM adapter where the actual lunar module sits down into the spacecraft or into the rocket itself and so what I did was I shot the green on the inside and then I cut these uh, circles out of thin cardboard and put double-sided scotch tape on them and pressed them into place, burnished it down along the edges like this, and then shot the white with uh, uh, pure white uh, Tamiya. And I like the color. I like the, I, I like the fact that it's got a little bit of a luster to it. I think that looks nice. Um, the question is, did any paint seep into some of these little crevices uh, and get inside? That I don't know, but I'm going to open it right now, so we're both going to find out here. So good. Looks good. I don't see anything that uh, that sprayed up inside of there, so I'm pretty happy with that. These areas I masked off just so that when it comes to gluing these little hinge caps in place I'll be able to glue directly onto uh, bare plastic instead of having to scrape the paint off and then I can touch that up with a brush so that turned out good so cool so what I'm going to do I think is I'm going to um, take these panels and clean down any overspray on the edges glue them onto the lower section here assemble this whole this whole adapter assemble this whole thing and then what I'll do is I'll probably put another one of these kind of uh, 
cardboard caps on the top and then reshoot this whole adapter with one uh, one top coat of paint just a nice a nice even coat so it all looks it all looks so uniform so I think that's gonna be my next plan on that and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and begin assembly of all these panels onto the service module here um, I have that and then these here are this piece here and this piece here actually will glue in place whereas that other panel is hinged and I, I kind of just fit the parts together and they don't it's not a great fit um, you're gonna see some seams where they open up especially by the hinged areas where it hinges and where it closes um, why they didn't make I guess this one piece I guess because they couldn't make it show you here this piece fits on like this okay and then this little piece fits in here um, I guess you couldn't have made it one piece or would not have fit but I, I would think there would have been a better way of doing that but anyhow what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a, a gap here and I'm gonna probably have to deal with that I'm gonna have to fill that somehow I'm not gonna just leave that like that that would be too too obvious so that will get taken care of um, where I'm going to have an issue, I already know it is going to be where these, where this panel hinges into here, and then where it closes up on this side is going to be a little bit of a gap, but I'm not going to be able to do much about that. That's just the, that's just the way the kit is. It's the tolerances aren't that close, and so, you know, it's going to be a little sloppy that way. But again, that's how this kit is, and that's how it's made, and so you build it to the best you can. Um, again, you can get into this thing and really modify it and you know then you might as well go block two all the way but i'm building it pretty much out of box with the exception of the um boost protective cover i've added that to the uh to the entire stack um finish this piece cut this section out of here it wasn't cut out of here originally but i cut that part out so that it could accommodate the electrical umbilical like that so that fits on there really well. Probably you can't see that, but there it is right there. So one thing about this um, boost protective cover, this is a, a 3D piece, a 3D modeled piece. It's a very coarse texture on the inside. And so I purchased this Mr. Surfacer. It's supposed to be like a spray putty or a spray filler. And I tell you what, I sprayed and sprayed and sprayed this stuff in here. It's really hard to sand. Doesn't like it really doesn't take the sanding very well. And I didn't want to go at it with a real heavy grit piece of sandpaper, but I tell you what, this is not easy to sand. So I put at the very least five or six coats of this in here. And I probably put that many, if not more, coats of white paint in there, and I sanded that white paint primer down and then shot it with uh, the Tamaya white just to make it, you know, relatively smooth. And it is relatively smooth, but there's gotta be close to a dozen coats of paint in here. And the same thing with the outside. I didn't use Mr. Surfacer on the outside, just, just paint. And I sprayed numerous coats of white paint on the outside of this BPC and on the launch tower itself and sanded it. It was a lot of work to get this smooth. It looks nice, but I'm telling you, it's you get a lot of hours into making this look nice, just so you know. You might want to spend the extra money if you want to go that way and get a little, get some different, get it made out of different plastic. I mean, it could cost you a couple hundred dollars just to have this made out of maybe a different plastic so it's not so coarse. But, you know, this was like at or around a hundred bucks, maybe a little less than that for this whole piece. So that to me was affordable, but it took it took a lot of work to get it to, to, look, to look nice and to be smooth. So the command module turned out pretty good. Um, I shot it with testers chrome right out of the can uh, had I been thinking I would have decanted that and used it in my um, I wanted Neo but I didn't really know to do that at the time so it shot out pretty heavy like the chrome does and of course it obliterates any fine detail so you're not going to see any fine lines on here which again to me it's fine because this is going to be a display piece more so than anything else, I wanted it to be shiny, to be chrome-like in appearance, kind of like the original command module. So uh, any fine detailing is, is secondary um, with this particular kit. 
Um, I had that issue with the hatch, so I fixed that hatch, um, the pin hinge, so that's working good. Um, the docking adapter here, transfer tunnel. So unscrew this here, I'll show you what that looks like. It turned out pretty decent. Again, there's no real photos to go to for this block one um, parachute package. It's all block two stuff. And other than what you see in the instructions on how to paint it, you have to kind of, you know, I guess, um, basically include a little bit of artistic license in the painting process. But, you know, still make it look nice, look at, make it look believable. And so that's what I did. It's a clean paint job, and, and so it looks nice. And again, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. So the RCS thrusters will have to be painted. I don't have a decal set for this, so I'm gonna have to just do that by hand. But all in all, it turned out good. The heat shield um, just glued it to the outer shell. Um, didn't really handle that seam in any particular way other than just made sure that it fit nice and snug. And it seems to fit pretty good. A nice snug fit there. A, a slightly textured appearance to the, um, to the heat shield. Turned out good there. So overall, pretty happy with that. The service propulsion system engine uh, sanded out all the seams, used uh, Tamiya putty on this, and did a really good job. The seams really don't exist any longer. It turned out really good. The only problem with this is that the engine bell is out of round. You can kind of see it. It's slightly egg-shaped. Had I noticed that, and I don't know how I didn't, but I noticed it after I glued it, and I could have probably popped it apart and then reformed that, but I didn't. So I ended up painting it and just going to live with it because ultimately it's going to be stuck to the bottom of this service module, okay, like this. It's going to be fitting like that. It's going to fit on here. It's going to fit on the stack, and you're not going to really notice that. It's going to just sit just like that. So... I'm not going to wig out too much about that. If you look at the end and stare at it, you can see it's got an oblong kind of going this way. Just got warped, got warped in the heat probably uh, over time wherever this kit was stored before I got it. But all in all, still looks good. Not going to not going to get too worked up over that. So That's that. Pretty much uh, the next step is to finish the uh, lunar module adapter, get that all finished off finish off the, uh, the exterior of the service module, get that all built up, and when I'm done with that, then I'll put together the next video to show you that finished product, and uh, should be able to stack the entire um, spacecraft at that point and show the whole thing without the lem inside, of course, and that'll be my last project would be building the lem. So, anyhow, thanks for watching.